curl friends, I'm Bianca Renee and you're watching Bianca Renee today and today just might be one of the most important curly hair videos you will ever watch, especially if you're new to the curly girl world and that is choosing the best styler for you and your hair. So many of you are just grabbing stylers that say curly on it and then you're wondering why your hair isn't looking the way you want or why this product isn't meeting your curly hair needs. So I'm gonna break it all down today because some of you are using leave-in conditioners wondering why your hair is frizzy. Some of you are using oils wondering why it's not moisturizing your hair. Some of you need that extra moisture and you're using gels wondering why your hair is crunchy. I'm gonna solve all of your problems right now. So sit back, relax, and you might want to take notes. I really only want to get into stylers today, but just a little side note. I hope you know that shampoo is used to cleanse your scalp, you know, make sure your hair is clean, but mainly your scalp, and that a conditioner is more for the lengths of your hair to give your hair moisture and help you detangle. Then after you get out the shower, that's when things get a little more complicated. So let's start off with leave-in conditioners. This is probably the most misconceptualized hair product there is because a lot of you will get out the shower, you'll apply a leave-in conditioner and walk out the door like a real wash and go. Some of you that might work for. There are some leave-in conditioners that are good at taming frizz, keeping your hair shiny, blah, blah, blah. But that's technically not the job of a leave-in conditioner. A leave-in conditioner is literally a conditioner you leave in, meaning you don't wash it out. A leave-in conditioner can be used in the shower as you detangle and then you just get out the shower, you don't rinse it out. Or you could use your shampoo, your conditioner, and then get out and then apply a leave-in conditioner. Especially if you're rinsing out the conditioner, a leave-in conditioner will allow you to keep that moisture in your hair without having to rinse it out, without having to worry about any type of product buildup on your scalp. If it's silicone free, of course. Now to prove this to you, we're gonna do what's called reading. I know, crazy concept. A lot of you guys don't like to read when most of the answers are smack dab right on the bottle, on the back of the bottle, in my description box, in my caption, but you guys just never want to read those. So here I have the Camille Rose Lavender Whipped Cream Leave-In Conditioner. I've never used this, as you can see, it's fully loaded because I just really don't use leave-in conditioners, but this one is silicone free. If you guys are looking for a silicone free leave-in, but I'm gonna just read the label. It says that this product is used to soften, detangle, and moisturize strands. That's exactly what a leave-in should do. It does not say has great hold, it does not say will prevent frizz, it does not say anything else because a leave-in conditioner is not a frizz fighting styler. It's just step one out of the shower. Another example is the Shea Moisture Tea Tree Oil Low Porosity Protein Free Leave-In Detangler. Keyword, leave-in detangler. So this one is really claiming to help you detangle your hair because they stuck it in the title they were so confident about it. It says that it's supposed to provide lasting moisture without surface buildup. It will leave hair smooth with a healthy shine. Nowhere in this description does it say it's going to prevent frizz or have any hold. And that's fine because that is the only job of a leave-in make it shiny, make it moisturized, make it a little bit easier to detangle. Now, if you are looking for something to help combat the frizz and make sure your hair doesn't get all fluffy by the end of the day, you need to apply an actual curly hair styler, which could be like one of these. For example, the Shea Moisture Coconut and Hibiscus Curl Enhancing Smoothie. It says this is supposed to reduce frizz, define curls, smooth hair for soft and silky feel. Because this is one of my favorite cream stylers, I can say that that is true, and it does do all of those things. Another one might be the Diva Curl Super Cream, another personal favorite of mine. It says to define and control, looking to give your curls frizz-free, 
detachable hold. That's what we're looking for. This is the Rizos Curls Curl Defining Cream. Creates bouncy, shiny, frizz-free, voluminous curls. Defines and holds without leaving hair crunchy. That is the most beautiful description I've ever read and it's exactly what most of us curly people are looking for. We want all of those things. If it is on the bottle, definitely go with it because that's what it's claiming to do. If it is not claiming to fight frizz, don't get mad at it for not fighting your frizz. So if you want, you could use a leave-in conditioner first to get that extra moisture if you have very dry hair, and then apply a styler, a frizz-fighting styler, on top of it. Step one, styler step two. If your hair is already moisturized because you're deep conditioning once a week or you maybe you just don't have very dry hair in general, you might be able to skip the leave-in conditioner like I personally do and just go straight for your stylers all on its own. And all these work great on their own and I don't think there's any need to combine them. If you are using two or three creams that are claiming to all do the same thing, why? If it's claiming to do the job, let it do the job. And if it's not, it's just not a good product. Try something else. So if you are gonna be cocktailing something, you could do a leave-in and a cream or a cream and a gel or a leave-in and a gel, but you don't need to be using more than one type of cream styler. It's just unnecessary. Now I also recommend using a styling cream if you're someone that has very dry hair and you need that extra moisture, or you're someone that hates hold. Hold is what we call that slight crunch or hardness that holds your curl pattern together. I personally love hold because hold means I'm gonna be able to hold this look, this curl pattern all week long. And I need that hold to last me throughout the week and I need that hold to help me diffuse without creating frizz. But if you just hate the crunch, you hate any stiffness, you want your curls to be as soft as possible, just use a cream. But if you are like me and you like hold, that's when I would bring out the gels and usually even a mousse. Now sometimes mousse can give you different types of results. My personal favorite, as you guys should know by now, is the Not Your Mother's Curl Talk Mousse. This baby right here will give me hold, definition, and shine all week long. And same with my other two favorite stylers in the whole wide world, is the Curl Keeper Ultimate Frizz Control Gel, which actually claims to fight frizz even in humid areas, for those who live in humid areas. And my other favorite, the Dippity Doo Girls with Curls Jelly, sold at Select Marshalls for only $5.99. Now these products right here, as amazing as they are for my curls, like these are my three favorite stylers ever. They will create a slight cast, which is another word for hold, which is another easier word for crunch on your curls. I like that hold because it lets me know, hey, we're a little hard right now, but when you diffuse, we're not gonna get frizzy because we're kind of stiff and in place. So we're gonna give you that volume and then you could just scrunch your curls like this and that will break the cast. As you do this just with your hands or as you do this with a diffuser, it's gonna make your curls even softer and then that cast is gone, but you had that first initial hold that you needed to get to that place. I hope that makes sense. Not with me if you're following me so far. Okay, good. And on the contrary, if your hair is extremely dry and you're using a mousse or a gel and you're wondering why your hair is so hard, well, that's because gels aren't used for moisture, darling. It's not their fault. It's yours. For example, this bottle reads that it's gonna have ultimate holding power without flakiness. It's going to give you support for any hairstyle for several days and will leave no product buildup. This is not claiming to add or give your hair any moisture. And that's fine because that's not the job of a gel. The Dippity Doo Girls with Curls Jelly. It's good for shaping, smoothing, and separating your curls and helps eliminate frizz. Nowhere on the bottle does it say it's going to add moisture. And that's fine. 
Now, one of the last things that I have to explain to you guys is oils. So many of you are applying all of this oil on your hair because your hair is dry and you're assuming that oil is gonna like grease it up. Well, you're not a car, darling. We're not gonna just lube up the way you do your motor. Our curls are a little bit more gentle and that's because there's different types of oils. I have a whole video on oils. I will link it below in the description box so we don't have to go over it all again today. But there are two types of oils. There's penetrating oils and there's sealing oils. The penetrating oils will actually penetrate into your hair, which can result in giving you more moisturized curls. For example, coconut oil, olive oil or avocado oil are just three examples of oils that will penetrate into your hair. These are also going to be the ones that are most useful to apply to your scalp because it's actually going to absorb into your scalp and moisturize your scalp and or your hair. Now sealing oils, sealing oils help to lock in that moisture and actually sit on top of the hair. These do not penetrate into the hair shaft, so they're really just adding some shine and locking in the moisture that's already in there. So think about it like this. First you would apply your leave-in conditioner or maybe your hair mask, because now your hair is filled with moisture. Now to make sure that that doesn't come out, you wanna close the door and lock it in there. And that's where sealing oils would come in handy because it's going to kind of coat the hair and make it shiny. Now, I know what some of y'all are thinking, the wheels are a turning. This sealing on sitting on top of the hair cuticle thing sounds pretty similar to silicone, which is true. Contrary to what many of you believe and you think that I just hate Silicone, even though it does nothing for my hair, I don't need it, I don't miss it, I think my curls look just fine, it's really none of your business, it's my hair, not yours. <clears throat> but oils are gonna be a little bit more easier to rinse out than these stronger, non-water soluble silicones. But jojoba oil, Jamaica black castor oil, grapeseed oil, these are all examples of oils that do not penetrate the hair shaft, they just sit on top and add some extra shine. So if you have a really dry scalp and you're wondering why these oils aren't like helping moisturize your scalp, it's because they're not getting in there. They're just sitting on top, looking shiny. And every oil has different benefits, way more benefits than a plasticky silicone would because these are more natural ingredients. And that's kind of why I personally don't apply sealing oils to my hair ever. Now, of course, there are gonna be some exceptions to the rules. For example, the Cantu Moisturizing Curl Activator Cream. This is claiming to be a moisturizing cream. So I could see why you would get this and expect your curls to be moisturized. In my experience, because the best way to know if a product works for you is to use it on your hair, which I have done, and this actually does have great hold. Any product that has hold, that kind of gets hard or crunchy, I wouldn't really recommend for moisture because it's kind of getting hard and moisture usually means your curls are soft. Now, although I love this product because it does create hold, this is not a product I would recommend to give your hair moisture. The Cantu Coconut Curling Cream, for example, that one is just straight up moisture. Probably why I don't really like that one because I need some type of hold, which the activator gave me. So once again, the exception to some of the rules, it says moisturizing on here, but it's not that moisturizing. Another example would be the Shea Moisture Miracle Styler Leave-In Treatment. This one is a leave-in conditioner, but it's also claiming to be a styler. So because it says both, I could definitely see how some of you would use this all on its own as your styler and as your leave-in and have beautiful results without having to add another cream or gel. So the moral of the story is reading is key. Reading is going to be the greatest first step in deciding which product you should use. Of course, not every product is gonna live up to its expectations on the bottle, and some are gonna work for you and some aren't. But at least now when you go to the store or you order new products, you know not to order a gel for moisture or not to order a leave-in for frizz fighting hold. It's just wrong. As always, my personal recommendation would be to find products that are sulfate, paraben, and silicone free. 
Also three words that are commonly found right on the bottle. If not, you might have to do some digging within the ingredients, but it'll be there. I have a whole video on how to read the back of the labels if you guys need help. I would use a leave-in for moisture, a styling cream for styling, and a gel for hold and definition. And only use oils when necessary. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I post two new videos every week, once on Friday and once on Sunday. And make sure you hit that bell so you're notified as soon as I post a new video. I give you guys daily tips on my Instagram in my Instagram story. So also follow me on Instagram at Ms. Bianca Renee. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today. Yeah.